Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and in this lesson we are going to be solving multi-step equations. Mainly two-step equations, but we're going to do lots of different things to those equations, so get ready. Our first step is that we need to know how to solve an equation. Um, I've seen this done lots of different ways, so this is the method I'm going to use, and I'm going to consistently use this same method for all of the other equations that I solve. So just watch this method. You might look at this equation and go, I know what the answer is. But follow these steps, and then when the equations get more difficult, you'll always know a good consistent method for solving them. First off, I want to identify my variable. When you're asked to solve an equation, that's what they're asking. What is the value of your variable, your unknown? And in this case, our unknown value, x, right? That's our variable. What's connected to that x, and in this case, it's plus 9. So we're going to do the inverse of plus 9 to both sides of this equation. It'll look like this. I'm subtracting 9 from the left side. x plus 9 minus 9 leaves me with x. And 7 minus 9 equals negative 2. Now, you might have said, I know the answer is negative 2 right from the very start, and that's fine. But if you follow these steps, when the equations become more complicated, you'll be in good shape. Let's look at a basic two-step equation. We're going to follow the same exact steps. We're going to identify what is our variable, x. That's our unknown value. Now, this is where it gets a little different because there are two things connected to it. We need to recognize that there is both plus 4 and multiplying times 3. When we're solving multi-step equations, we do the opposite of the order of operations. So you notice I did the addition first and then the multiplication. That's backwards of the order of operations. Or you can think of it as my good friend Shrek does. We peel away the layers, right? Like onions have layers, right? We peel away those outside layers. We're going to peel away the 4 first because it's farthest away from the x. Then we'll get rid of the 3 after that. Right. Either way, our inverse operations here are subtracting and division. So that's the order we're going to do things. First, we're going to subtract 4 from both sides of this equation, leaving us with 3x on the left and 6 on the right. Now we're going to divide both sides by 3, leaving us with our answer x is equal to 2. If you ever want to check your work before you submit it, which is a good idea, you can substitute that 2 back into the original equation and see if it's correct. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 4 is equal to 10. So we can do that as we, as we move through. Let's look at another equation. With this one, we have the parentheses. We're going to need to use the distributive property. So before we can actually solve this, what we're going to do is distribute that 4 into each term inside the parentheses. So 4 times x is 4x, and 4 times negative 3 gives us negative 12. Now we've got our basic two-step equation. And we'll follow these same steps. My variable is x. I'm subtracting 12 and multiplying times 4. So I'm going to do the inverse of those operations. Hope I didn't go too quick there. I'll show you all the steps. I'm going to add 12 to the left side of the equation and add 12 to the right side of the equation. The, two, the positive and negative 12s cancel each other out. I'm left with 4x on the left, 28 on the right, because 16 plus 12 is 28. Now I divide both sides by 4, and my answer is that x is equal to 7. Again, you could plug that into the original equation, and you will get the correct answer. The left side will be equal to the right side. Next type of equation, solving two-step equations when you have x's. In other words, we've got two x's there instead of just one. Well, I'm going to first use my order of operations. I'm going to try and solve and simplify anything that I can. So I'm going to use the distributive property, 5 times x and 5 times negative 2. That's the first thing I'm going to do. It'll simplify this a little bit on the left side. Now I'm going to join together like terms. There's 5x's minus 3x's. That will leave me with 2x's on the left side. I still have that minus 10 and the negative 8. That stuff did not change. So now what I'm going to do is follow my regular steps for solving this equation. 
my variable is x. That's what I'm trying to solve for. I have minus 10 and times 2. That's what's connected to the x. I'm going to peel away those layers by adding 10 to both sides and then dividing both sides by 2. Let's do it. Negative 10 plus 10 leaves me with 2x by itself on the left side. Negative 8 plus 10 gives me a positive 2. So I have 2x is equal to 2. I divide both sides by 2, and I'm left with my final solution that x is equal to 1. So that's how I would solve this two-step equation when I have to join together like terms. The next question I want to look at has a fraction in it. Oh dear. 4 thirds x plus 2 times 5 is equal to 22. This equation, actually um, I kind of sampled this or, or modeled this after um, a sample test um, for the Common Core testing. So I wanted to make sure to use um, sample questions that were similar to the, the, the test questions. So this one here is actually one that looks very similar to a sample test question. So let's go ahead and solve this. Notice there are some things I can simplify. I, I can simplify 2 times 5. So I'll go ahead and do that. 2 times 5 is 10. Everything else is basically ready for me to solve. Let's follow those same steps. Notice these steps have not changed at all throughout the entire course of this. Following these steps will always get you the answers. Let's do it. My variable is x. It's connected to two different things. First off, I have a plus 10 on the left side of the equation. I also have it being multiplied times 4 thirds. So the inverse of that is to subtract 10 and to divide by 4 thirds. Now, something special with dividing by a fraction. Remember, when you divide by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying times the reciprocal. So instead of dividing both sides by 4 thirds, I'm going to multiply both sides times 3 quarters or 3 fourths. All right, just want to reemphasize that dividing by 4 thirds is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm doing the same thing as what I've done before. Let's get rid of the 10 by subtracting 10 from both sides of the equation. Let's get rid of that 4 thirds by multiplying 3 fourths times both sides. And you notice 3 over 4 times 4 over 3, that would give you 12 over 12, which is 1. 1x one leaves you with x on the left side of the equation. 12 times 3 is 36 divided by 4 leaves us with 9. So our final solution is that x is equal to 9. A couple of things that we've seen throughout this lesson that you'll need to know how to do. First off, you need to know what the order of operations are. That's first we do the exponents, um, first we do the grouping symbols, then we do the exponents, then we're going to do multiplication and division in one step, then we're going to do addition, subtraction, and another. You need to know those steps to be able to solve them backwards. You also need to know what inverse operations means. That means doing the opposite operation. When we see addition, we do subtraction to undo it. When we see multiplication of a fraction, we divide by a fraction, or in other words, we multiply by the reciprocal. You're going to need to know how to use the distributive property. We saw that in a couple of, of different questions where you're multiplying what's outside the parentheses times the things that are inside the parentheses. If you need help with any of those topics, I have videos on all of them individually that you can kind of watch to get a step-by-step -step, um, idea of what that is. But if you are pretty familiar with this, then, then you're good to go. Here are the Common Core stand anchors and the PA eligible content. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.